Hello guys and gals, me Mudahar, and welcome to another episode of the Some Ordinary Podcast. Today I've got uh, Nux Taku Oompaville, unfortunately has some personal stuff he's sorting out, so we're going to leave him aside from now, but we brought to you the gamer from Mars, who's landed on Earth to join us for this fine episode. How's it going, buddy? I'm doing very good. Hell yeah. <laughs> doing good, so, looking good, stepping up to the plate. We love this man. Dude, every time I go to your comments, it's like every single hater jumps in and they're like, oh my god, he's Jack now. <laughs> that, <laughs> Dude, like, I love it. <laughs> the, that's the interesting thing is like after losing 50 pounds, um, I went from the haters saying calling me fat in the comments to now they're accusing me of taking steroids. Um, it's like you can't move with these people. <laughs> people have one brain cell, all right. You're never going to yeah. convince anyone of anything on the internet. Yeah, it's like, it, it, but but I mean, like, but I mean, like, when I jump in, and it's like, it's just, it's just the amount of people that are like now surprised. I'm like, if you, it's like, it's not like a new thing either. It's like I've seen you looking like this for years now. <laughs> like, can, it's not like a brand new thing. Is it just because you're on camera more now? Yeah, I think that, and also I had the, uh, you know, the multiple years where I just uh, did my videos under the flashlight and a portion of that was to kind of cover up the weight loss and like no one, so no one would notice it so for All two right. years of when i was doing the most in terms of like body transformation it was just me in like a dark room so people couldn't really tell Wait, um and, and now it's just i think random people that don't watch me just stumbled upon one of my videos at some point in more recent times and then they're like shocked that i look different you are a reverse boogie 2988 you don't want people to see the weight loss boogie loses yeah. 30 pounds a week and somehow never loses any weight this is the difference. Dude, I love I love Boogie's recent like health shit. I don't know if you guys have been following it. That dude was like apparently he's not drinking soda or eating anything bad and shit and apparently like he stopped drinking the f***ing pink drink from Starbucks and shit. And like he started switching to like guzzling coconut water at home and I'm like, dude, man needs a f***ing nutritionist. Dude is following the worst f***ing advice I've ever seen. I mean, you could still drink soda, just switch over to diet soda. Like it's not good for you, but if you're at Boogie's weight, it's if you're actually going to be able to sustain diet Mountain Dew over water, then do the Mountain the diet stuff over the regular stuff. Also, uh, coconut mm. water is pretty expensive for a guy that can't afford a chicken sandwich. Well, hey, it, listen, depends on the day. <laughs> you see, you're quite. You see, see, see what you're doing next is you're f***ing actually bringing some real thought into the situation, and that's not what Boogie wants. Mm -mm. I, don't know. Be part I saw of the Boogie's f audit. I saw the guy talking to him about like his money. Yeah, yeah. What still blows my mind is that he tried to guilt trip his audience uh, to that he lost all his money in crypto because he put 250000 in crypto. It went up to seven hundred fifty and went back yeah. down to two fifty. Well, not just that. That's not when losing he had... anything. When he was, <laughs> when he had the crypto highs, he then got a loan out on a dog to improve his credit. He... <laughs> Like I, I st like it still doesn't add up to me why he did that because he had a he had a mortgage that he was paying off on time, uh, you know that's that's more than enough to have a decent credit score. Uh, so it, it, that just didn't line up how he still owed money on that dog, which who which the, he doesn't even like the dog that much as he said. Dude, that was the f yeah, up part about it. I felt bad for the dog. I was like, damn, <laughs> dude. He's like, I don't like the dog. He's not as good as him. He's like my hated dog. I'm like, damn, dude. What the and, f and the also, poor guy do? The, the other thing is when pe when anyone asks him, um, why didn't you pay off your mortgage when you had all that money? He said, I wasn't thinking about tomorrow. But he was thinking enough about tomorrow to put the dog on a, a credit card so he would improve his credit by taking out that loan. So, like, you care about your credit score for the future, but you don't care about your life. It, you know, it, it's such a shame because, like, every time I've had a, a, a conversation with Boogie, he's been nothing but nice to me. Like, I've mm -hmm. only had positive experiences with him, but, uh, like, there's just the amount of self-sabotage. Okay. It's Dude, just it's beyond Boogie's frustrating. being nice to people in calls, I have thankfully dodged the biggest bullet of my life. I don't think I've ever been in a call with Boogie. However, um, whenever Muda's in a call with him, Muda will be, like, super critical. And he'll be like, you ruined your life. You were doing terrible things. And Boogie will say, that is very fair. You make a very valid point. Right? Like, he'll be a gentleman. And then, then the next sentence, he's just going to interrupt you. On, go, go on, like, a whole off-the-rails rant. What was it? He repeated the same sentence 47 times. He took that out of context. He took that out of context. He took that out of context. Yeah. Right, something like that. No, it, it, the, the thing about it is, like, look, at the end of the day, I always wish, like, everyone gets their life in order. And, like, same with Boogie, right? Like, people get this weird conception that I hate him, and he puts it out like I'm a big hater. But it's, like, I think you all can understand. I know Art and Nux, you both know that, like, 
I'm very blunt when it comes to people like this. Like, I can be nice, but usually when I see the same pattern of shitty behavior, like, I can't be nice anymore. I have to just straight up tell... Because somebody has to tell you, like, you are f***ing up, right? Like, somebody has to be the, the person that doesn't butter your ass about shit like this. Um, and that's one of the things that I, that, I, that I aim to do with, like, Boogie. Like, if he has a conversation to me about money, I'm like, dog, you're the only one in this entire call that has burned six figures on flying out around the country and, and sleeping with bookers <laughs> on the same time. Like, no one in the, You know what the thing is? No one in this call has ever, like, been engaged with hookers and, like, flying out to meet hookers and buying them, like what, like, Chanel bags or some well, shit? I don't know if the Chanel the, bag stuff is true. I, I mean, we, like, the boogie wallet, like, you almost can't help yourself but always go back to it, but that was one of the baffling things about <clears throat> Mike Klum's documentary is that not only did he pay the escort for her services, but then he gave her, like, a nice purse and gift cards in the purse. It's like, you're already paying for the transaction. Like, you don't have to leave a tip. Like, I don't... I don't I, I, it just it's it just seemed like he was carelessly throwing away for his me, money. Well, well you don't, you don't think she deserves the service charge, the, the for gratuity? Damn, damn. <laughs> are you damn. What, are, what, are, what are you implying <laughs> here, Muda? <laughs> well, I'm just saying. So he's against the gratuity piece. <laughs> <Like there's... laughs> no, no, but like, like for me, the funniest thing is the defense. It's like Boogie. Why do you spend two hundred thousand dollars on hookers? <laughs> well, actually, all the numbers in the documentary were fake. Okay, well, it, good here's the thing. Dude. Well, here's the the the. I don't know if it's a paradox per se, but with Boogie, it's always Boogie. Why'd you do this? And then there was excuse, excuse, and then if you keep on digging through the excuses, at the end, he's like, I, "You're right. I'm a, I'm an idiot. I'm a, I'm a piece of crap. What could I say?" Like that's always the defense like that's a mechanism, defense, right? Yeah. So like he'll defend it, and then when you get down to the bottom of it, he'll admit mm -hmm. that he was wrong. But the problem is, after he admits he's wrong, he it just the cycle repeats. Um, and I really wish the guy the best. Um, he's I, I, he's one of the first people I subscribed to on YouTube back when I started my account in you know, 2009. Uh, uh, I have yeah. faith in Boogie because he just uh, he did Flaming Stars psychedelics treatment, and um, I trust Flaming Star. Dude, that's the one thing I'm super wilded out about. It's like, dude, you should not be doing f***ing shrooms, bro. You gotta be. <laughs> but Flaming be. Star is a licensed. Uh, I don't know. Shaman. <laughs> shaman. He's a licensed shaman. The interesting thing is I've, I'm working on a story fire documentary. It's been in the works right. for many months now. It's coming out soon. And in it, you know, there's many people that bring up this experience of at VidCon back before the pandemic, Boogie was in a bad spot and then he took DMT and he was like enlightened at that point. And then you watch Mike Klum's documentary and it's just the same thing. He's a mess. He takes psychedelics and now the psychedelics improved him. Uh, the shrooms did it. So it's like just this, this reiterating cycle of, um, and I've seen this over time watching him, of him saying, like, you know, I got a new therapist and I'm doing better now. And, you know, on, on one end, you can't, like, you know, knock him for saying, I think this time I'm going to, like, break free of the yeah. cycle. But you also can't uh, deny the fact that the cycle just keeps on repeating for I don't know. I, it's hard to take anything at face value. See, here, you know? getting cured, uh, getting yourself out of like a dark place and like a bad rabbit hole and a bad cycle involves sacrifice and hard work. Going right. to uh, get to Flaming Star to try shrooms and thinking that'll get you out of it, it it's not going to work because it's the easy way out. Ultimately, I think Boogie could get himself out of the cycle, and I think he, he could make his life better, and I really want him to. Um, but I think it'll need to come from like a lot of sweat and tears on his part, and not just trying to find to get get out of jail free card by making mm -hmm. billions on crypto or getting shrooms from Flaming Star and resetting his brain or whatever the terminology I, was. I think the problem is if like one of us went down and like was with Boogie twenty four seven and like prevented him from getting fast food, you know, made sure he didn't spend money on stuff, made him go and like get some exercise in, go on his walk. Um, you know, oversaw him every step of the way. Um, if he had someone like that in his life, he probably could improve, and that's what he needs. But you know, somebody yeah, that's he's, not enabling. Yeah, no, he just has enablers around him. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, I don't so, know. So, they're not doing it on purpose maliciously to him, but at the same time, they're they're not able to like kind of step up and be the the better influence to prevent him from you know, getting fast food or spending money on uh Hosting you know video Magic games the that gathering play. tournaments paying for the newest video game you know like yeah. left you his know, own honestly devices. like I'm, I'm getting my and getting my entire like basement done now so i can give boogie and like every like important person in his life a place to stay at my house with the only exception being that like 
I am the person that prevents him from drinking the Mountain Dew and going to Chick Fil A. Like he would be my social experiment. I can fix him. The, the thing yeah, it's is, like the ultimate idea. The thing is, with the, like, I see, you see him drinking Mountain Dew, and it's like Diet Mountain Dew isn't any like more expensive. You know what I mean? Like, you switch that to out. To be fair, it, Diet Mountain Dew doesn't taste very good. Man, I don't know. Like, Diet Dr Pepper tastes the same to me whenever I I have some. Uh, it's, so. Well, it's like it's like beer, you know. Like beer sucks when you start drinking it, but then eventually it's like, oh, okay, I, I got the flavor to it. Same with any diet stuff, right? Like it, it's just some you know. some diet I find does not really mm -hmm. t make a different diet. Yeah. Coke, you know, Coke Zero, that all kind of tastes the same. Slight differences, but there are certain diet drinks like diet root beer, uh, diet Mountain Dew, diet like iced tea. Like they all have like this very artificial, super sweet. Like they all taste like Prime. Yeah. They all taste like Logan Paul's Prime. Even then, it's like I didn't. I always thought, like up until now, that he was drinking the Doctor Mount, like the Diet Mountain Dew shit. Until like recently, I like had to like zoom into the can, and it did seem like the sugary variant. So I was like, "Damn, dude, that is," like, and and that and that's kind of the stuff too. It's like if he's, I honestly, if he switched to like cutting out the entire sugar, bro, he would lose a he would lose a fair bit. I mean, are yeah. you the fucking smart I, I, guy I'm actually one. doing the math on my calculator right now for this. So let's say he's consuming a liter of Mountain Dew each day. That's 480 oh, calories. God. If he just cut that out and got the aspartame sweet and diet stuff, um, let there's in each pound to burn off a pound of fat. It's about 2,500 calories, I believe. So mm -hmm. 480 calories a day removed from his diet. If he didn't, add more calories elsewhere he would lose 70 pounds in a year just off the raw math if he just cut out the mountain dew for a diet mountain yeah. dew that's crazy that's so, crazy but it fluctuates because you know oh. the metabolic rate changes if you change things to your diet so let's let i mean bring that down to 50 pounds lost over just you know a simple switch of it tastes a little less good for the diet stuff um that, that's all it would take well um, even the other thing too that i want to also bring up is like even beyond like and just the eating and everything too a lot of it is like even his and, and one thing we have to understand too is like his his like monetary situation that he has isn't exactly the best he's not stable in that department either so i feel like a lot of this goes against him like it's easy to chase the health and like worry about yourself when you're not worrying about the day-to-day -day of your life I get right that. like so that's I true. feel like that's kind of the other issue that he has as well. Like he's put so much effort into, or not effort, like he's put so much time into YouTube and like trying to make this dream work that he has no other avenue of making money that like he can't, I don't think he can take a day off if, if we're going by like his, his metrics. So that, that's one of the only ways that I kind of sympathize with him in that regard. Cause I'm like, oh, I get it. You're kind of locked into a rut. But at the end of the day, it was his fault. That said, what is the out from there, you the, know? The past is the past. What do you do now, I, you know? I've made a video a, a couple weeks ago kind of breaking down Boogie's financial situation. And when you when he actually releases a gaming news video with a decent title and thumbnail, it will get like 30,000 views up to like some of them get 50,000 views if it's like GTA news or something along those lines. Mm -hmm. If he just consistently did that five days a week with the newest gaming news of the day with a decent title and thumbnail that he put some effort into and mm -hmm. consistently did that, um, you know, had his Lol Cow podcast, money from Keemstar on the side. Um, you know, I, I don't see why he couldn't make like you know a hundred thousand dollars a year. Possibly, he, he could. I, I did the numbers and it, and it added up to that. Um, if he was able to get a couple sponsorships as well on top of it, um, but even if that, without that, like seventy thousand dollars he can make. Um, I just don't think he's able to do that grind anymore. Well, the, the, so. the thing about it is, it's like he's looking more towards like the larger YouTubers, because he's always mentioned, like, money to me. It's like, you made more money than me than I have ever done in my prime, which I don't know the veracity to that, but, like, at the end I of mean, the day, probably. it's like... Yeah, I, you know what? Yeah, maybe, sure. I'll, let's let's be completely fair. But that's not maybe, relevant. But exactly. It's like, it's about you and your situation. Now, you, you have the opportunity. He still has a platform, and, like, you're right, Art. Like, he can get 30,000 views on these videos and make some decent living for himself if he chose to be consistent daily. But that's the Look, thing, right? Like I, when I just go to ahead. say it. In the last week he uploaded one video. He uploaded two videos each that were like three seconds long. Be right back and tune in next week or whatever. But in the last mm -hmm. week he uploaded one video that was seven minutes long. Okay? It got sixty thousand views, which isn't isn't bad, right? No. But seven minutes doesn't get mid roll ads and it's one video. I, aside from my main channel, where I'm, you know, working on, like, you know, like, once a week, let's say, whatever, um, on my second channel, I upload two videos every single day, and they're all, like, between 20 and 40 minutes long, okay? Uh, 
that's that's 14 videos a week. That's 14 times the amount of videos that Boogie uploaded in the last yeah. week. Like, it's not like he can't grind. He can't. I, well, I, I don't think he's capable full life of. Aside from that, it's, I, you need structure yeah. for that too, right? Like, think about it like this: I wake YouTube up in the morning. Hard. It, it's got, very like, hard, but this guy has a lot of experience, yeah. more experience than I do. Okay, he's been around for longer than I have. Well, think about it like this, right? Like, he's got to wake up every day. He doesn't really have the rigid structure, right? So it's like, he wakes up. I don't know what time he wakes up. It's got to be, like, after, like, 12 p.m. or some shit. So I'll, I'll give the audience and, like, you guys just what my day looks like. And I'm sure your guys' day is very similar. I wake up pretty early at dawn. I go do my, like, I don't do YouTube for a living. I have my own, like, actual business that I have to go to every day. So I make sure I wake up early. I go to that business. I take care of everything at the office. I come home. Like, today, I come home a little earlier just because I know we have to film this podcast. After we're done filming, I edit my YouTube video for, like, you know, the day because I recorded a night before or sometime before I leave. I take care of my daily stuff. I come home, you know, make the YouTube video and call it a day. That YouTube grind, like, I'll be real, I haven't truly turned off my brain from the day at all. Like, you're always wired and you're always ready. Yeah. But that's the kind of mentality you need to be at if you want to genuinely succeed on the platform, right? Or you, yeah, because consistency is the best. A lot of people best. think that you just need to turn the camera on for 20 minutes and talk. You need to come up with the right idea for the video because yeah. you're going to record a whole video and it's going to be something that's not going to do well. That's worthless. And it kills the momentum for your other videos. So you have to mm -hmm. always be on point as to what you're going to record. Then you have to research it. You have to come up with your, the take you want to have. You have to record it. You know, either get it edited or edit it yourself, depending on if you're a masochist like Muda that, that <laughs> works way too hard. And um, it's it's a lot of work. I'm not downplaying it, but this is his you, day. You know, like, I'll tell you guys, like, why I edit my own videos is because, like, before anything, I did, like, do editing. Like, that was my, like, thing. So my method of doing it is... Like, if you watch my videos, it's not like it's necessarily overly edited, but the edit that I can do is very much, like... I can get it done quickly, right? Like, I can get it done quickly and efficiently. Um, and it works for my channel. Like, the only time I ever got an editor to, like, do a video, like, bro, the comment section was like, what the f*** is this stock footage, dude? What's going on? Like, I was, like, f***ing bullied for the yeah, over I'm like, Jesus yeah. Christ. Yeah. I was like, f*** man, y'all are gr roasting me for stupid shit. But generally, I do find it fun to also work on my own stuff. Like, that's, you know... Because at the end of the day, it's not like it's a job for me. Like, it's just something that I can do that's not, you know, the daily f***ing grind that... It's not that I hate doing, it's just, you know... I like having something all to myself, at least. But, anyways, to go back to the Boogie situation and, like, his growth. It's like, if he wants to genuinely succeed, he has all the time in the world to achieve this, right? And I think... I This is, this is like, my take. I think what's more important than doing the f***ing mushrooms and wasting the money and, and honestly, the time on that is to... And wake up, get some structure, work with what you have, you know, your YouTube channel. Granted, it's not where it's at, and maybe it never will get there, but you can build it up and be consistent and have a pretty good living, right? Like, if if Dark Side Phil can make six figures a year, Boogie can make double him, all right? People still watch Boogie. I don't know anybody that's watching DSP on Ironically, you know? <laughs> like, that guy is a fucking nut job. Dude, if DSP can make needs money, Flaming Star. Someone get this man Flaming Star ASAP. You know, it's like I've seen them on their low-cal podcast ripping on DSP, but it's like, you know, out of everyone there, DSP still has his life reasonably together, you know? He's like, married. He, you know, has dinner with his wife every day, you know, gets the job done. He works nine to five. It seems like he, he, works, for, he works a 40-hour week, um, you know, at the job. You could say yeah. he's just playing video games, but... You know, playing video games day in, day out with, like, a bunch of trolls trying to, like, scrub everything you say to get something to ruin your life with, that, that's uh, that's not something a lot of people could do. I don't think I could handle that. I'd be so I would paranoid. I would quit gaming if that was my life. I would never f I would quit YouTube if that was, like, my daily, like, thing. Because if I'm dealing with people just hating me day in and day out, f*** that. <laughs> like, I might as well go jizz mopping for a living at that point like jesus christ because I, I i think that was a th the thing that occurred to and, and a lot of people realized um with that h bomber guy video that came out where he was like you know exposing people like the internet historian and stuff you know if, if someone was super dedicated and all they wanted to do for a year of their life is try to expose a youtuber the youtuber's been around for a lot of years and you want to dig into every like 
tweet they've made in every YouTube video, you could probably build up a case for them. Um, so it's like, you know, it's just a matter of when you're someone like DSP or Boogie and you have active trolls that are trying to go after you and you kind of, uh, yeah. you know, poke this prod them a bit uh, and they, they respond to the trolling, uh, you know, you just, you get this vicious cycle. Mm -hmm. DSP uploaded seven videos in the last day. Does anyone? I don't think people. Everyone. He only makes his money off the live streams. Does he get any views on the the reuploads of them? I don't. think I so. watch them. As They're long under as a thousand. I exist, DSP will have one viewer. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, well, with like his stuff is like people jump in to like troll him on live streams, and it's like, dude, at this point, it might just be financially beneficial if you just like have the fucking uh, the text to speech going and just like profit off of that like he nobody watches him unironically for like oh i want to watch this guy i don't think there's many people these days that are actually like let's play viewers you know like he has a small audience that pays him a lot of money that are genuine fans that's the surprising thing like he doesn't make his money off the trolls i don't believe the, the money comes from a small but dedicated group of viewers. Oh, like a whales and stuff? Yeah, well, I mean, yeah, I mean, yeah. it's kind of uh, ironic that you know, he wild. has whales giving him money. But, yeah, I think there was, like, back in the day, there was some, uh, like, metric that came out of, uh, I think it was, like, it was Twitch, Twitch, yeah. yeah like, Twitch apparently leaks. he was, like, 35 bucks per patron or something. Like Which the is, like, the highest, the highest on the site by a wide margin. Yeah. Um, so, you know, he's successfully gotten, like, a cult audience... Um, I mean, you have to think about it. There's people like the Nostalgia Critic and Angry Video Game Nerd and Red Letter Media that have been around for over a decade. They're kind of making repetitive content at this point. It hasn't changed in a, in 10 years, but mm -hmm. they have this small niche group, you know, with someone like Angry Video Game Nerd, it's a million people. Um, but, you know, those people are, are now just so used to watching them, and they're just, like, in this mode of, I watch this person, this is what I'm comfortable with, I will watch them for the next 20 years. Uh, yeah, they, but they, Nostalgia Critic still, you know, he gets, like, 100,000 views a video or whatever like that's dsp's that on a smaller scale with a very dedicated group of his live stream watchers he has yeah. people that have watched him for 10 years and genuinely like dsp that's and wild. they're just comforted by watching dsp live streams when they come home and even if it's only a couple hundred people those people realize like oh shoot like you know he's gonna like lose his house and not be able to stream anymore if i don't pay him some money and it successfully has people that like give him a decent chunk you have a software engineering job where you're making a hundred thousand dollars a year and you watch G dsp in your spare time it's not that outrageous to think that you throw him a thousand bucks a year to make sure he's able to keep on doing it for you just get a couple yeah. of those people and you're able to make you know a hundred thousand dollars I get it. You're right. That's that's awesome. I mean, the metric for him, yeah. I mean, at that point, and, and you know what? For DSP, the most important thing is he's consistent, you know? Like, mm -hmm. he may not be consistently f***ing amazing, but he shows up for mm -hmm. stream on time. And the thing that people don't understand about, like, consistency when they're watching, it's like, when I upload, like, a daily video, there's an, there's kind of, like, an expectation, oh, this guy will upload daily. If I miss, like, a week, it's like, oh, shit, is he in the f***ing hospital? Does his appendix break again? Yeah, you get those I've been doing it for so long. you upload for a bit. It's like, uh, is he okay? Is he dead? Is he, like, gone forever, you know? Yeah. I think especially and, with all the YouTubers quitting, a lot of people are just extra scared. Like, Matt Pat dropped his uh, goodbye video. Lost Nux. And, um, um, but continuing on with this thought, I, I've realized minds. that, um, you know, over the years, like, watching people like uh, Boogie, you know, not uploading for a month at a time occasionally, you know, just in my personal channel, because I'm running multiple businesses, you know, you have one uh, person on the team that, you know, is out of the office for the week, it kind of, you know, just that one little step, and then you miss an upload for a week. Just, it yeah. happens. So, you know, you ex yeah, include mental illness on top of that. It's it's mm -hmm. very easy to just kind of fall out of sync in terms of making content. And then, right. you know, it, it's YouTube. I, I've noticed recently on YouTube, they're looking for two uploads a week. If you're not uploading twice a week, it's you're not like optimizing the algorithm for the most part. Beyond these guys, like obviously this week has been really wild with other shit. So yeah. I know that before we started, uh, we were talking about in Coach Red Pill. So, Art, you're okay. here. You know about Coach Red Pill. Yeah, I've been following the Coach Red Pill story for many years. I remember he'd, he'd get in fights with Mr. Medicare back in the day um, on live streams, and uh, you know, Medicare would. Uh, Is Medicare okay? By the way. Um, he keeps on saying he's going to die of cancer, but he recently did a live stream where he's still he's still kicking. Uh, he's right. he, he posts on uh, some third 
some like Twitter competitor platform and someone uh, automates it so that his tweets there get brought over to twi- actual Twitter for people like me to look at. Um, okay. So he's still alive and well. Um, but I just remember at the beginning of the Ukrainian war, uh, Mr. Medeker would do the coverage of this guy, Coach Red Pill, who for some reason... Uh, oh, yeah. I remember this. He was a Sigma male anti-SJW YouTuber that decided to go to a war zone and uh, he'd like be live streaming there in a hotel by himself because everyone else like evacuated the country. And, Some real uh, Sigma behavior, no so, joke. So, <laughs> so this guy would make videos like five ways to put women yeah. in line, like calling women dogs in videos, like, you know, the, the usual Sigma male stuff. And uh, he was not very well liked. There's plenty of articles. You can find old BuzzFeed pieces about him um, and like all the controversies he's been in. But um, yeah, so for some reason, the guy decides to go to Ukraine at the beginning of the war and he's there live streaming. And uh, not only that, but he's like pro Russia and he's in a war zone uh, for the opposing side of who he believes is the going going to be the, on the right side of history in this ordeal and conflict. Uh, so he would sit there and kind of trash Ukraine in these streams. And at some point, he got abducted by the Ukrainian government, uh, or the military at least, where they had him under custody and people thought he died. Then I believe at some point he popped, popped up on his Telegram account again saying, like, he's okay. Um, but then he just stayed in Ukraine and kept on trashing them. And uh, now it's just been reported um, after many months of uncertainty that he has been killed by the Ukrainian military while in captivity. Um, so. Wait, is this I real? Make a, uh, yes. See, like, I want to make a whole video on Oh my like, God, Coach I didn't hear because... this. Uh, what? Yeah, like, yeah. Sorry, so this guy literally died for yeah. no reason. Uh, <laughs> Are you making a video on this too? I am tempted to. I don't have time to fully write okay. it myself, but I'm seeing if one of my writers could okay. jump on to the story. Wait, so, so this really guy went for this Sigma crazy. male grind set. He went to Ukraine and died in a war? Yeah, and he's like this 50-year-old guy, like just like this, some random middle-aged dude okay. uh, that, that, that like, for no reason went there. Like, it See, never that's like literally that. like, yeah, it's like literally a title of the video, the only Sigma male channel is dead. Like, literally, <laughs> he's the only... Sigma male that went there, like he actually challenged the whole thing, goes out there okay, and he gets killed because when he was out there in the Ukraine, he was again actively shitting on them. And I believe even before the whole war had started, he was living in the Ukraine, right? Like he wasn't. I, I don't know the details about why he was there. He, he's not native to Ukraine. I'm pretty sure he's an American guy. And but he was there um, mm-hmm. and he was. He, it's not like he had a house there. He was staying at a hotel um, right. while the war was taking place. So he would be live streaming, chilling in the the the, the hotel pool uh, while like hear gunshots and like sirens in the background sometimes. Um, did, and it's just like he's like, yeah, man, it's chill here, go nothing to going an active on. Active war zone, and uh, you don't make content about it. I think that makes you a bigger sigma male. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Like, imagine if you're just, like, a Let's player, and you're like, yeah, boys, I'm sitting in Ukraine right now. Hold on. I'm sorry that you guys can't hear me really well. There's a missile shell that just went off. Well, that's what Laura yeah, Miles did, at least. But, like, he befriended the people he was... He, he befriended the Taliban, he befriended at least. The Taliban. That's, that's how he survived. You, you don't, like, <laughs> trash the the people in the country you're in that's, uh, you know, on the verge of, like, being un- economically unstable and going under. Yeah, I mean, I like, but 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 see, that's the thing that that's what makes me like, in a way, respect Coach Red Pill a little bit more. Like, I don't like his message, but like, I can respect the character of somebody that's like, you know, f- <clears throat> these people. I'm gonna go right to their country and shit on their. See, he's like, he's like the anti-Twitter fighter. You know, like people on Twitter just argue about shit on a daily basis. This motherfucker actually goes down there and criticizes, you know, like the fucking like Ukrainian on their doorstep. Speaking of both Sigma males and you know, uh, Twitter warriors. One of my favorite YouTube dramas in a long time happened this week, and I'm very happy to uh, to bring it to everyone's attention. Oh, Did shit. you see Sneeko getting into drama this week? Uh, I heard that he, like, people have been roasting him because he was flying spirit or some shit. Oh, no, no, no. That's not the funny thing. Okay, so he okay. calls out this guy. Um, some guy, he's a jujitsu fighter, and he, he makes fun of him. Uh, and he's like, oh, jujitsu? Jujitsu's an artistic man's sport. A t- 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 and he's just making fun of jujitsu, okay? All right? Yeah. 
He's like, look at this guy, he's a nerd. And then every time the guy would talk, he would like, you know, put his hand on his face like he's adjusting his glasses and be like, well, actually, my master knows how to use jujitsu. And he would like make that voice and everything, right? Uh, I'm surprised you didn't call it an anti-Semitic sport, to be honest. It, it like gets better. Like that. It get, wait, yeah, jujitsu. You can't say jujitsu. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, say like, right? So the, the, here, here's the best part. The best part is this guy that he was making fun of turns out was a five times jujitsu world champion what like not just some random guy he accidentally calls out the five times world champion in jujitsu and the guy says he like he makes a response to this nico basically saying you're a bully and i'm not gonna stand up and i'm not gonna deal with this uh i get out of here you're a bully you suck and i will challenge you to a fight and i'll beat the hell out of you basically <laughs> <laughs> it not gonna doesn't even him. need to be jujitsu. We could we could do MMA. You could fight in any way you want, and I'll I'll, I'll annihilate you. And Sneeko's like, uh, Sneeko's response is, uh, actually, uh, I I tell jokes on the internet. I don't act, I don't actually like fight. You're a trained fighter. Uh, it's a different thing. Like that's his response, and then he makes a second Dude. response to this guy to dig his grave even deeper. Uh, and I love this part even more. <laughs> saying i saw you know um mark zuckerberg so if you could get me on a podcast with mark zuckerberg to explain to him the evils of zionism i will fight you <laughs> what <laughs> what the frick guys Dude, crazy? i, I swear insane. like this is what i never understand about the alpha guy community right like look compared to like coach redville i have respect because he fucking goes down into the dirty right he goes into the fucking trenches Sneeko sits in the apartment in Miami, shit talks somebody who can actually kick his ass, right? Like, lay him flat on the f***ing ground. And then just, he like, how do you puss out of a fight publicly in front of this crowd that you've, like, built? Well, and then not get destroyed. Part, huh? It's kind of, they almost see themselves as WWE wrestlers at this point in terms of, like, they're the bad guys and they know it. This is mm -hmm. what Neon's done this before, yeah. where he's got an on calls with active crypt members dressed in all red and, like, flashing gang signs, I think, occasionally. And, like, he'd later, like, meet up with them and the person would, like, beat them up or, like, steal his clothes and steal his shoes and, like, film it. It's all, like, just scripted where they want to be... Um, you know the bad guy, and yeah. uh, people it's watch like them. They vilified them, so they are the villain. So now they're gonna. Yeah, and then to... at some point, like they, you know, Neon takes it to the extreme where he act, he like works with these people, so he gets beat up sometimes, times, and is humiliated to keep the uh, storyline going. Like they, they just don't care about anything, though. I mean, that is that is a that is a fucking incredibly like that's a that's a wild way to be making content. I mean, I'm sure it works, but it's just like, damn. That's 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 a lot, dude. Yeah, that's a I, lot to be dealing with. I love that. I think the whole story was this is like one of my favorite drama situations, just because, um, like this man, he he is everything that he swore to destroy. Like he has become the Twittered keyboard warrior that's scared to raise his finger, which is exactly what he was calling out like people like Charlie for, right? It's it's hilarious yeah. to me. And it's funny, like when, even when he was calling out Charlie, like we all knew Charlie was a jack dude beforehand right like he could probably beat the he could easily beat the shit out of sneak i put money on him so it's like he's calling out everybody else like i don't think has he ever called you are out art or something i've or never or talked to sneako before um i don't think i really talked about him on my channel i really wish you i really Missed wish out, like he would call you out and then like you could do you could follow up the fucking story too it's like i mean we can fight sure and that, that's sort of the thing, too. It's just, man, the, these, like, you, I'm glad you mentioned the WWE comparison, because now it, like, starts to make a lot of sense to me as to why they're doing it, because it is just, like, a f***ing personality that they play, and when confronted with it in reality, it's like, they're never going to, to f actually do something about it. But even in the wrestling example, like, those guys could still handle a fight. Sneeko doesn't appear to be able to do anything of that nature. No, but, um, like, again, they're on kick, they're live streaming, they're getting donations. If you see Sneeko fans that approach him in real life, they're 11 years old. Um, like, that's not, like, an exaggeration either. That's mm -hmm. that's just, like, when you see the people that are watching him and Neon, uh, that's their audience. They don't care about being the good guy. They know they're so far past that point of being redeemable in the public eye yeah. that they're just embracing the evil villain persona and uh you know if they get they lose a fight they lose an argument they just see it as more publicity for themselves um the only thing yeah, you can do I is think ignore it's like them. uh you know the the same thing um xqc with the flexing right yeah like he's the same care. idea like he's become vilified for flexing yeah. so at this point 
He'll just flex wherever he goes. You realize, yeah. hey, I'm making a bunch of money off this grift. Uh, I don't need to be liked. I, I, I make six figures, just sometimes seven figures with these people. I really don't know their finances because uh, they'll say that they're making seven figures. You just never know what the truth is and if they're fl- yeah. if they're fudging some of their numbers. But they are making very good money for themselves and living yeah. nice, lavish li- lives. Um, you know, if they just get, you know, uh, beat up on the internet sometimes, uh, like on Twitter, uh, and they're not actually getting beat up in real life. Uh, you know, they're fine with it. And you know, at the end of the day, it's like if you're if you're a creator like this, I, I just wish like the audience that follows them, it's like they wouldn't be so dumb and believe everything they said. Like I said, my my aunt's kids are like follow a lot of the Sneeko stuff now, and it's like, oh, these people are all like, like like it's just it it it. I wish some 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 of the younger generation could see past the BS, but then again, that's the whole joy of being young you know like you just tend to believe anything that Suppose. throws uh, that gets thrown to you they'll figure it out in due time but you know it, it is what it is I, I find it interesting that for a very long time ever since the adpocalypse the internet was just so tame and then all of a sudden elon musk spies twitter kick comes on the kick comes to the on to the streaming realm and they're they're gambling back so they don't need advertisers and like the internet just becomes crazy again um i think i mentioned this last time i was on mm-hmm. a podcast but uh it, it's interesting to see it um i i'm just it, I'm baffled by people that are actively still mad at people like Sneeko um, about things like this um, and don't just take it for what it is, which is entertainment. Um, life's so much better when you just laugh at these people and yeah. you know take in the joke of it all I mean, instead. And, of, yeah. Yeah. But yeah. my favorite part about making fun of people like Sneeko, uh, I have to say, is like anyone that dishes it out kind of deserves to get it back. Mm-hmm. Right, and he dishes it out so much. Like there is no ethical yeah. quandary with calling out his bullshit. I mean, you know? my thing with him is like I love like making fun. Of, even if a video on Sneeko gets made, it's always just from a place where it's like it's a joke to me. Like the guy is a joke, right? Like if you were to take anything he said seriously, that's really on you, right? And it goes for like an Andrew Tate or really any of these type of guys. If you take what they say seriously, then I think you're the actual. You're, you might be the bigger joke, you know? Like these people are not to be taken seriously. All you can do is laugh at them, laugh at the absurdity, right? Like, and then when you see guys like XQC, who when they start getting into a debate with Ethan Klein and doing a fucking worm, it's like dude, all you can do is just like laugh at the fucking insane absurdity of that. That's really all that it is, right? Like, the guy is just a fucking meme. But even beyond all of these guys, right? Like, what is what is content for kids? There is some content for adults that came out. So we are we we are older people. I assume we're all familiar with the name Billy Mitchell, right? <laughs> I, I, yeah. One of the first things I ever watched on Netflix on <laughs> on streaming uh, when in like I don't know 2008 was uh, a fistful of quarters, the the Billy Mitchell documentary mm-hmm. about the Donkey Kong World Record. So I've been watching this guy for many years. He is a very controversial figure, right? Like there's people even before, like, so for full context sake, five years ago around, there was a serious uh, allegation that his um, his records were faked, right? So records for games like Donkey Kong, uh, the arcade version of Donkey Kong, uh, Pac-Man. So he got like hundreds of thousands of points. In some cases, the records were of a million. So... There were some serious, like, uh, allegations brought up by YouTubers, researchers, people who didn't like Billy Mitchell, but also people that wanted fairness in this, like, you know, online sport. So Billy Mitchell got his f***ing scores taken away briefly, right? Because now, well, not briefly, but for years his scores were taken away. He started a lawsuit with Twin Galaxies and other YouTubers over this whole situation. To give you an idea, I'm not exaggerating when I say he has put more effort into defending himself than fucking O.J. Simpson, right? For arguably (laughs) a less important situation. Like, these are f***ing video game scores, right? (laughs) Hey, hey, hey. O.J. Simpson just allegedly killed his wife. This is a different story. Yeah, I mean, story. You, I mean, hey, listen. Allegedly killing your wife? That's yeah, that's some rookie shit. What about faking your yeah, Pac-Man bro. or Donkey Kong scores? That shit. Oh. That's criminal, dude. But, but fucking, so he defends himself, and it's like, all right, I can see why he's a little upset. Because, hey, his business revolved around being the fucking expert player of these video games. So when you're taking away the man's fucking street cred, and that's what his business runs off of, you know, he can't sell hot sauces without now. Now he can't call himself the best Donkey Kong player in the world. So he starts these lawsuits, and literally today, as we're filming, 
It turns out that he settled his lawsuit privately with Twin Galaxy. So this lawsuit that's been going on for like, this whole situation really has been going on for like five to six years. He privately settled it. And then beyond privately settling it, they reinstated all of his f***ing scores. Like, he's back. You know? Like, for all intents and purposes right now, it appears that he's won. So I looked into this case, and he brings this one expert witness on, uh, Dr. Michael Zeta. And this guy, like, pretty much uh, brings a few points about the original video that they used to verify his score. It could have, like, visual artifacts. It was a VHS recording, so he maybe he didn't clean tape heads right, and there's artifacting from there. We've all made YouTube videos. We understand that visual artifacts are a f***ing thing. So it's up to the audience to think if all those artifacts contributed to making the video look like a fake f***ing screen or like a fake uh, emulated playthrough which 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 was the allegation to begin with anyways it got settled he's come back his scores are reinstated and uh yeah i don't know if the situation is totally over like i'm more interested in the carl video because carl the youtuber um carl jobs he's been like basically on the f***ing f billy mitchell grind for years at this point and that's also because he is also getting sued for defamation by Billy Mitchell. And again, these lawsuits that Billy does, they don't really fucking go anywhere. He has like the money, and I don't even know how much money Billy has to fucking have, but he has enough money to take people to fucking frivolous court battles and just like fucking financially ruin them and then just back out of the last minute, like puss out of a battle and then, you know, leave people financially, which I don't understand how the legal system in the US allows that. But it seems like that's the, the situation that we've got to deal with with him. So um, so does anyone know how Billy Mitchell made his money? Because I doubt it's from the world records. I think it's from, like, shit that he sells. So I remember, like, way back, this is an AVGN episode, but i got to read more into it. Uh, he used to sell, like, f***ing hot sauces. Like, his, like, he had an actual, like, hot sauce brand, which I think did relatively well. Enough for him to f***ing build a crazy fortune or something. Uh, everything, every product that he ever shilled was because of his persona, you know? And if you take that persona away, what the f*** else is he going to shill, right? Like, that was just, the big thing. I have trouble wrapping my head around the concept that he created a hot sauce line based around I have the world record in Donkey Kong, and that, like, sustained a, like, a profitable... <laughs> that was his brand. A, that sustained a profitable uh. business for him to afford you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars in legal fees to sue a bunch of people questioning your world records. I, could, I mean, but, yeah. it, I don't, like, maybe there's more <clears throat> shit to it, but, like, he clearly had enough money to take this stuff to court, and, like, that's the other thing, too. It's, like, this shit is so important to him because, like, again, that's what his brand it's is built has. off of. It's, it literally is all he has. And then it's, like, he'll take you to court over, like, a video game high score. Which, maybe I can't understand the importance of it myself, but, like, god damn, dude. Like, he, 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 he literally is responsible for going after people ruining his life just because, like, hey, they're questioning his scores, you know? Like, it, you know, it becomes a defamation case, which if you don't know in the U.S., it's like, if you start a defamation case, it's very difficult to prove. But beyond proving it one way or the other, the amount of money lawyers spend, like, we're talking lawyers that cost like four to five hundred dollars per hour you know that's gonna add up to yep. anybody financially so you know most people youtubers a lot of youtubers in the in the market of questioning him don't have that kind of money to f***ing spare so it really it literally is just settle with billy and like suck his dick and and you know let him basically bully people in court which is what it seems like has gone on yeah. uh so far yeah, not even just the money aspect, but the stress of you know, being involved in a lawsuit and not being able to focus on other work because yeah. you're busy with it's that. It's a lot. Um, but yeah. It's insane how dedicated he is. It's like, will anyone actually ever believe or trust him? Like, this isn't even for his reputation. It, it's I mean, just it is, like because personal. now he could say that, hey, they reinstated my records. What are you talking about? I'm, it, yeah, but Sneeko could say he's not a cuck. Okay? <laughs> like, at some point, it's going to enter the court of public opinion. Give it to Sneeko. Yeah. He hasn't ever sued anyone, has he? No, he hasn't done any bitch well, stuff like that. Money. Yeah. So that's the thing with, like, Billy Mitchell. He's just kind of a boomer that, you know, all he has is these world records, and he has this, like, persona that's... I mean, how many people know who Billy Mitchell is in the great scheme of things? Ten million? Uh, 
Here's the thing. The people that know him don't like him. I, I feel like he, does, he doesn't have, like, a fan or an audience. I mean, like, in right? A Fistful of Quarters, he came off, like, they, they framed him as the enemy and, like, as, like, the, the, the big bad guy and the, the other guy was the underdog in the story. Mm. And, like, he came off as, like, an interesting kind of, like, aesthetic of a person. But that was, like, in the early days of, like, internet nerd culture where there was kind of, like, a, a cool... I don't know if aesthetic's the right word for it, um, you know, where it's, like, interesting because, like, you didn't get that in the mainstream media. So these people breaking out online as pop, uh, popular um, was, like, a big thing. Nowadays, it's just this dude's, like, 60 years old, sells, like, this, like, weird, like, long haircut uh, and just trying to, like, keep don't his, Don't like, forget the I mean, fucking he's not American he's not tie, 60 dude. years old. Yeah, he's, old. like, 58. What? Yeah, he's 58, bro. He's in what? vintage. Dude, think about the game that he was an expert at, bro. That game's okay, like... Hey, all right. It's a, you make a good <laughs> point, like okay? 35 years old, bro. <laughs> that's, yo, that's crazy. Like, I had no idea. Like, okay, the game that he's after... And this is the other thing, too. It's like the game that he's, like, contesting over is, like, fucking 30-something fucking years old, dude. Like, this is Donkey Kong in the arcade. Like, we Like, this is a game that came out long before we were even sperms all of us you know like we weren't even tadpoles swimming around before like this game like billy mitchell's record came long before that era you know so he's fighting over a record for a game that most people don't care about like if you told a kid what do you think about fucking pac-man they don't even know what the pac-man yeah, is it's not even like you know when you get to the nes super mario yeah. brothers or the original legend of zelda you have young people that are kind of interested in the world records but when you get back to the arcade games like Donkey Kong and Pac Man and and uh, you know you know Frogger, I it's just uh, you, you have this appeal from this like nostalgia 1980s crowd, but those people are now all in their 50s. Uh, it's 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 old. Uh, yeah, they, they could they could care less at this point. Even like like fucking... Twin Galaxies is not like. Uh, they, they were popular back in the day as the record-setting group, but mm -hmm. I don't think that they really have much credibility anymore. Um, uh, yeah. When you watch like a Summoning Salt video, I don't think it really talks about Twin Galaxy records in that very often. Yeah, it's like, this is stuff that was created. It was like even the Todd Rogers shit too, right? Like, and when... For anybody that doesn't know that story, he was the guy that claimed to get a basic impossible score on an old Activision game known as Dragster. Like, we were talking an Atari video game, okay? People don't even know... You know what? More people in my audience... Not not my audience. I don't want to offend my audience like that. That's that's a little too far. <laughs> but more people in the younger crowd know more about Atari from f***ing Soldier Boy than they know about f***ing Todd Rogers, you know? So this is a whole scenario where it's like these people are fighting over records that, you know, most of the world has just forgotten about. Like, it's it's over. It's like from a long time ago. And... It's, yeah. Yeah, the only reason it appeals to people now is because, like, if you're in the gaming sphere, right, like, or you're in the sphere in general, you, you probably show, like, the interest in that. You just want to see where the story leads to. You don't even, I don't even necessarily care about what Billy Mitchell was doing for this entire time or whatever. I mean, the only reason that I have a disdain for him is how he, in my opinion, bullies people in the legal system. That's it. You know, other than that, it is what it is. Like, if... It's like it's like any YouTuber that comes out with like a cheated record these days. It's like it doesn't even shock me. Like at least from my understanding, most people. It's also it's so easy, I think, to fake record. Like there was a whole thing in the Pokemon community. Some Pokemon guy recently faked a world no. record, and even on Red and Blue, like he did on other gens. But Red and Blue has been like optimized to like crazy, you know. And uh, he just, after a couple of months, he did it, and eventually they found that he was fake. He was splicing his footage together. But, well, he, and you know, of course, he's defending himself the whole time, mm. right? And he's talking about how, well, you know, sometimes luck is a skill. And it's like hilarious lines when it turns out the guy was just cheating yeah. the whole time. Um, but, like, it's so easy to cheat, and then you get, enter into the public sphere, and then they call you out, and then they find out, and then you're toast, and then you need an astrophysicist like some friends of ours. Um, <laughs> but... Um, ultimately speaking, it's the whole legal system that made this man a villain. You know what's really um, insane, too, is, like, when we talk about, like, records and shit like that on the internet, like, what I don't understand is years of doing and covering this kind of shit, how do people who fake stuff not realize that at some point shit's gonna come out, you know? People think in the moment. People, like, I mean, why do people commit crimes that they know yeah. are going to get exposed at some point? Money laundering schemes. They just... All their thinking is two steps ahead of them, and they'll push through later on. Yeah. 
it's like an Andrew Tate type. He he could have just stayed quiet and not became like a huge internet celebrity, and he would have been able to just keep on getting away with bribing the Romanian government. But he had to become the most famous person in the world, which is you know going to cause his inevitable demise. Which puts a spotlight. Yeah, on not you just that. It makes something. the Romanian government look bad. So like, there's no amount of money that you could bribe them now because they have the international community looming over them. Um, yeah. Over it. Um, so at that point, nothing you could do, um, and you know, he'll probably end up in jail because of it. Um, you know, look at Donald Trump. He probably they probably could have made a deal where if he didn't run for president again, they would have taken away all these charges. But now he's just like rolling the die on. If he doesn't get elected president now, you know he's probably going. It's to, over. He, it's over. He's probably going to go to jail or have to flee the country. Do you think Trump? Yeah, do you, do like you think Trump fine. would? Uh, do, you, do you think? Do you think he would have to flee the country though? I feel like they might do, like, some sort of deal, like, with Napoleon, where they, like, say he could go off to some island. Maybe they could give him Epstein Island and, like, just never have to leave. Uh, and, like, you know, he gets his money and stuff, and he could, like, live a lavish life there for the rest of his years. Um, but, you know, you know no, no jail time, but, like, we're, you don't have an internet connection. Oh, no. I, I wouldn't doubt if they did something like that. Because they got him on, like, 90-some charges, like... All it takes is one or two of them to go through, whether you agree with them or not. And, you know, he's going to face a prison sentence that, you know, he's almost 80 years old. And he doesn't, I don't think he's going to survive in a jail cell. I don't think, they're, I don't think they'll put him in jail. I think they'll keep him on a house arrest type thing. Yeah, he's well, that's too kind old, of my point you know. of the joke yeah. with the private island yeah. and stuff. It's yeah. Just, you know, Mar-a-Lago, you go there, you can't leave, you have an ankle monitor for the rest of your life. Something along those lines. Yeah, you live um, lavishly, but you're confined to this one location for the rest of your life, and that's all it comes down to. So, I mean, like, that's the deciding factor. If he doesn't win uh, the presidency, that's his fate. So it's like, why does he do that? Because he can't help but himself. In, in defense of Donald Trump, the man is funny. Yes. Yeah, Billy Mitchell isn't very that's fun. He, that, Billy that's Mitchell, Mitchell takes himself very seriously. Um, yeah. I don't yeah, think... Does he do interviews like nowadays? I don't. No, he's just he just like he he's just he's boy he's boring. That's all it is. Yeah, like yeah. he's not he you know he's not like he's fucking, he's it's not like any time uh, a critic. He, he's in the popular zeitgeist. Yeah. He's a lol cow. Is he is he not just a lol? He, he doesn't really do anything that funny though. He just sues people that call him out for cheating. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's like I mean to be fair though that's. In its own way, it's kind of like, funny. I'm sure, he has, okay, I mean, I'm sure he has a Kiwi Farms thread, don't get me wrong, but I just I wouldn't put him in the same camp as a, a Boogie or a Wings of Redemption. Well like or a Christian. think about it think about it like this too. It's like you know that guy director Uwe Boll that made like really shitty video game movies back in the day? Yeah. Okay, when Uwe, when no. people criticize so Uwe Boll for well, Uwe Boll is a director that played like video game out of or like movies of video games. And his he would he famously made the worst adaptations ever enough to just consistently piss off everyone watching his shit. So anytime somebody critiqued him on it, and I remember I forget who critiqued him. I don't know if it was like fucking Maddox or who the fuck, low tax or somebody. One of these guys they criticized him, and you know what his reaction was? He was like, "All right, let's fucking settle this in the ring." And like he brought his fucking critics to the ring yeah. and literally beat the living shit out of them. <laughs> oh my god. Like, what? To give you an idea, Uwe Bull is a fucking, he was a jack guy. Like he was more jacked than anybody criticizing him over the fucking keyboard. He's like, all right, come here. And there's video footage of him literally beating the shit out of I think it was Low Tax, actually. He was the guy that he brought him out to. He fucking set he like laid him out. <laughs> I'm pretty sure, like, wasn't his wasn't his grandfather a Nazi, and like he like he inherited money off him that people were like claiming was uh, like uh, pillaged from a certain group? Yeah, may maybe. What group was that? Oh, well, <laughs> well, it may be the tribe that went missing somewhere. You know. <laughs> <laughs> well, 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 at least some of them are still around. I, I, I want to make it clear. I don't know if that's true. I remember that that was something people claimed back in the yeah. day. Um, but I mean, you know, it's like it's it's like uh, but I. It's it's one of those things where I'm not like uh, claiming, but like I wouldn't be surprised. Like he comes from a heritage of people where like, they, you know, it is what it is. They they tend to be connected to rather unsavory people at that time. But that said, forget about the money. It's just like him, the way that he responds to the situation versus like Billy Mitchell, really anybody. It's like Billy could easily bring people out for like a f***ing hot ones contest using his sauce, right? It's like sit down and we'll see how we burn the inside of your tongue or like maybe even take him to a boxing ring no he just sues them which yeah it's in some morbid way it's kind of 
and funny to see this like evil douchebag who's made his millions just like shut I mean it's shitty to see but like in some wild way you can kind of sit there and be like damn this is the joy he gets out of it. he's like a real life Cartman you know he gets a joy out of ruining lives like he's just like actually yeah, evil it's like in that again I feel like that there's there's a soft place in the heart of so many people to just consume content when when the target of the content is just unapologetically evil yeah right it, it's like it's like the the sneeko thing right sneeko has very few redeeming features which i feel like is why people just love watching him dig his own grave right from from the cuties thing to the cuck saga to the charlie arc to the mags versus clips to the grifting and the andrew tate clones and getting kicked off mr beast's crew this man has he has more l's than anyone i know and that's just it makes it so much more fun when you watch him no. take another one I mean that that's just, that's just like par for the course with people like this, man. I mean, you know, they uh, I love like on the internet, and it's like what Art said. It's like when you learn to take these things without ever like when you learn to take the emotion out of this shit and just laugh at it. Life becomes so much more fun, you know. Just like looking at these oh, yeah. people, taking a laugh, and realizing that at the end of the day, it's like, damn. At least I'm not. Them. It's also the healthiest yeah. mindset. When I, when I see like creators or whatever just they get criticized and they go crazy and they write a whole thread in the response why why they're not actually so bad it's like they just lost yeah like you don't acknowledge this stuff like what what are you doing yeah i mean and that's that's like that's like the healthiest way to deal with with life and, and everything in general but yeah you know but uh i'd say like this week this this year has been so insane like january has had so many wild events that you could make an entire like documentary of just everything that happened this year. You got the Epstein client list. You've got like just everything that has been happening on a daily basis. The Miami Dude, my, aliens okay, and shit. Good drama yeah. though. Good drama exists too. It's a bleak world with a lot of situations that suck. However, Verbalace, the beatboxing cartoon YouTuber guy, spent fifty thousand dollars on a self insert has been hotel fetish animation a soft core pornography we're gonna have to censor that okay. one word. yeah we're gonna it's soft core you know he was he was being you know enticed by the character he was abducted against his will screaming no tied down to yeah, a bed but like, you're the okay? one that wrote it uh about yourself bro. yeah come on now that, that is just you and me that does that make like, it no, better so what if i what if i paid someone 50 grand to make that animation but with your character in it I would laugh my ass off that you spent fifty grand on it. Okay. It's a okay. Good so deal. It was, let's, it was let's, well okay. animated. We need to. We need. It was well we animated. We need to get to the True. facts of the situation. So how the f did this get leaked out? Did he leak it out? He definitely. I don't know. See, if you, see, the way I see it is, if you spend fifty grand on a custom animation for yourself for your weird fetish, you're gonna share it with your buddies. Like you got buddies that are into that, and you're gonna show them. All it takes is one of those guys to share it with someone they know, and then Dude, it's. Like, I, I mean, I don't care, bro. You could be torturing me in Guantanamo Bay, but a video like that ain't ever leaving my computer. I don't know. It's, like, it's like that whole <laughs> meme. Uh, you know, the Pope. The Pope goes one Sunday golfing. Okay. And, you know, he's golfing on Sunday. You know, he shouldn't really be doing that on Sunday. It's a holy day, yeah. right? And he's golfing, and he, he gets a hole-in-one, whatever. And he's all excited, and he's all excited. And he says, God, did you see that? I got a hole-in-one. And then God says to him, but who are you going to tell? Right? It's like mm -hmm. that, that meme that you can't actually share your victory with people. So, yeah, he definitely shared it with buddies, for sure. And also, I think it's very likely he wanted to make it some sort of content as well. Like, he does, like, have this cartoony vibe. Uh, he would at least get a tax write-off on the 50k. Yeah, if least, you upload it to a YouTube right? channel, you could write it off as uh, yeah. part of your business. Yeah, like, I'm paying for this yeah. content. I'm like, paying at least for make the some of that back. Poor fetish content, please write <laughs> At it least, off. right? Yeah. Sir, what kind of YouTube videos do you produce? <laughs> 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 uh, I'm joking. The oh, IRS God. never looks into that. They didn't do it that hard. They don't give a f but like, True. but like, all right. So, so he he obviously showed it to people around. So to give the context of this video to people watching, uh, the video is of a character from Has Been Hotel. She's flying around the world chasing his character, and eventually she teleports him into a fucking swanky, lovey hotel room where he gets pinned to the bed, and she basically <laughs> him is what's going on. She him. 
she, she, uh, she, she gets him basically naked with like an emoji over his and the emoji is smiling wider and wider uh, dep- based on his uh, is, Was that emoji added by people or did he have yes, that then. commissioned in? Because I've refused... No, I think that was, that was commissioned I in. I refused to... Wait a minute, no, if, if you're, you're spending 50 work. grand, why don't you go full in and make it hardcore? Yeah. Because I'm telling you, I think he wanted to make it content, and then he realized, oh my god, I'm gonna become a laughing stock of the world. <laughs> yeah, but like, but like, then he could have added, he could have added like, the fucking smiley face yeah, later. Here's the thing: is like, yeah, you, why didn't you just pay for two versions, like the censored one? Like, if you already spent 50, 50 grand, maybe he did, and he didn't share the uncensored one with that his sounds buddies. More, okay? That's a fucking national tragedy that we haven't seen the uncensored version. <laughs> Holy shit! <laughs> what the. So he spends 50 grand on it, and there's been rumors. Like, the only thing I heard about it was, like, there was, like, one really serious allegation where apparently he paid, like, a minor to commission this, which I don't know what... Really? The... I did not I hear I heard that. that the person who made it was, like, 15, which, like, I don't know the truth about that, so... I don't believe yeah, it. Yeah, I mean, it's one so, of the... Yeah. Honestly, unless there's evidence, I don't believe yeah. it. The, the, apparently, the person that animated it was one of the animators for Has Been Hotel, okay. like, the show. I, the show that's freaking on Prime, okay? There, there's no way a 15-year-old was hired to make that. Yeah. I mean, if it was Unless just some evidence, anonymous Twitter believe. animator that was hired onto the team um, just as a contractor. I, I believe it was one of the official well, animators. Well, they were running it, but what if that person project? was just hiring on a bunch of anonymous Twitter faces and oh. one of them was 17? I'm not saying it, it did happen, uh, but I yeah, I guess doesn't that's seem possible. unlikely. It's feasible. Yeah, and and the other the other thing is there's like bankruptcy statements, which like I've I've seen his channel. Yeah, he complained about the YouTube algorithm, but for a channel his size, fifty grand, he can he can part with. And listen, I want to just stress for the record, like I've seen people it's like, man, I wish I had that kind of money to f- around with. Sometimes and this is why, like, anytime a YouTuber tells you it's like, oh, life is really tough, and they're that big, it's. It's really bullshit, okay? A lot of these guys have money in the account for stupid shit like this. And it's... Bro, boogie. Yeah, I mean, hey. Full circle. Yeah, it, 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 and this is how you lose your money, right? Like, if you're spending f***ing... <laughs> you will never catch me spending f***ing money for fetish drawings or something, right? Like, the worst thing you could find out of my financial spending is, like, one time, like, when I took Jen out to a night at Morimoto's, and it was, like... I want to say my food bill, like, the, the bill that night came out to a grand because we were getting, like, super good Wagyu shit, like, sushi and stuff. That's the worst egregious spending you could see for me, you know, like, money-wise. Um, although, because I'm not spending 50 grand on, like, fetish or whatever the f*** it is. I'm a pretty frugal guy for most things. You get that so stuff I, for free. What do you mean? Yeah. Yes! <laughs> when I, when I see... You got the boogie cum <laughs> yeah. tribute, bro. You're not like the got, rest of us. I got us. the two mad come tribute, which makes me want to fucking. Oh right, die, right. Yeah. The two mad. But like, e- even with shit like this, like I get kind of shocked. Where I'm like, dude, fifty thousand dollars. That's a lot of fucking money. You could do a lot with fifty grand, right? Like you could, you can go on a fucking, you could go on some really awesome vacations. Why the f- like, wh- what? At what point do you have? At what point are you so p- addicted that you are sp- you dude, are? <laughs> I'm pretty sure he has a wife too. Yeah. Like I don't, I don't think he's single either. Do you think the wife right? prefers that like you would, she would be cheated on than have fifty thousand spent on fetish? It it almost harkens back to the story of the the Twitch streamer that was caught like paying for the deep fake uh, program. Atriok, for, yeah, yeah. And then like he's Atriarch. sitting there crying with his wife in the background. Uh, I, see, this is what I also didn't get about that too. I'm like, I'm like, dude, at what point? I feel like there's a big difference between. Paying, you know, the three dollars or whatever to become a member on some site. I'm not, I'm not saying that it's it's all kosher, okay? I think deep fake gross. But uh, yeah, I mean, three dollars versus a void check that or like a f-ing, like ACH fifty k and and waiting for months. This isn't just like a spur of the moment decision, okay? It's like, oh man, I'm lonely tonight. What am I gonna do? So, uh, I'm on I'm in front of my computer, so this was a, right? Th- this, I, don't, I actually don't have this backstory of this. So was this a YouTuber that made this? There's this guy Verbalace. He has like six million subscribers. Much- okay, he did. Yes, he does cartoon beatbox battles where you know you'll have Sonic standing there going. Poof, poof, Right, and then you'll have Thanos standing on the other side doing the same shit. Okay, and, and he has, he gets lots of views on those. His videos are have kind of been falling off, which is why people are doing the back, bankruptcy claims. But this guy has a self insert animation done by the official Has Been Hotel team. I've commissioned animations uh, of myself by the Has Been Hotel really? team, by the way, uh, not 
for fetish okay. reasons. It was like it was on the Times Square mm-hmm. billboard. I was on a Times Square billboard with Fifi, a friend of mm-hmm. mine, for like a whole meme. It was hilarious. But anyway, but th- they're expensive, and he got this done as like an AMV, and it must have taken months to animate, or at least many weeks. Uh, and he spent fifty k on it, and I believe all that. That all makes sense. It fits the budget. No, no, it does. I, I don't doubt any of that. Uh, I, I was just kind of looking into the angle but, of what his so wife thought about this. So it's the thought process. Um. It's the most gooner moment in <laughs> internet history. It makes Twitch's hentai <laughs> look like Shakespeare. Okay. Like the most gooner moment. That's like the best way to fucking put it. It's wild. I, like, how did it... Okay, d- so so again, to get back to your Atrioc point, that man had a dark moment and a dark thought for a five minutes one day, okay? This guy put aside 50K and weeks of waiting and orchestrating, and, and he storyboarded it, goddammit, okay? Wait, oh, he, what? Yeah, he, he personally storyboarded oh. that. He came up with every... Well, what do you think? You don't have to give 50k to someone and tell them to go well, crazy, do whatever you want. I thought he gave 50k to tell them, hey, listen, make some f***ing softcore, like, maybe he wrote, like, it was like a f***ing chat GPT prompt, you know? Like, you write your sentence out, and because <laughs> you're giving it to a f***ing human, they can better convey yeah. it. I didn't know that he storyboarded it. That's gotta... f***ing insane. Maybe, maybe he okay, didn't yeah. storyboard every scene, but he told them the vibe he was going for, right, yeah. okay? You're not going to pay someone for some cute animation, and then it turns out to be this weird molesty shit. Yeah, that's true. But like, God damn, that's like fucking nothing. Yeah, that, that's what I'm saying. It's the thought process that goes into it that makes this like in- incredible. I yeah, love this. He, he is like, he is without a doubt like, he has become kind of a laughing stock. Now, look, at the end of the day, if he didn't like commission a minor and like he didn't commission like a like that's the only important part to me. Uh, if he didn't go bankrupt, Maybe, I don't think he did anything wrong yeah, it's per like, se. It's just it's just his fetish. incredibly cringe. Yeah, it's, like, it, yeah. it's cringe. It, it's like the dude's fetish moment. comes out for the world to see and make fun of. And like I was just like, man, this is and and the thing is, what's really fucked up is I didn't understand how big of an impact this would have because for like two days he was like one of the largest trends. Like I woke up one day. And I fire up Twitter in the bathroom when I'm, like, shitting and stuff, and I see verbal ace, and I'm like, what the f*** is this? And, like, is this guy canceled for something serious? Like, what's going on? What is this? And then I... See, that's yeah. why I love this, because it's so not serious. Yeah. It's just stupid gooner, coomer, skibbity toilet riz like, bullshit. I'm just like, dude, it's, it literally is like, imagine if you woke up one day and it's like, oh, you see Mudahar trending, and it's like, oh, what is he getting in trouble for? Oh, he commissioned skibbity toilet... Like, bro, I, like, yeah, I didn't do anything wrong, but I would be so f- embarrassed. I don't even think I could face my family, because... No, 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 no. Muda filmed. He was the star in Skibbity yeah. Toilet Porn. Yeah, like, like I commissioned go. the guy behind it to, like, make a f***ing source filmmaker animation of me getting f***ed by the Skibbity Toilet. And, like, there this go. got so, like, this blew up so much that, like... I'm, I'm sure my mom would find out, you know, and she's not an internet person. She just, you know, she watches my videos and she's like, I want to support my kid. But then all of a sudden she looks up my name one day and it's like Muda looked up f***ing, like Muda's commissioning source SFM of himself. And then I don't think I could ever look at her for years, you know. I don't even think I could look at I couldn't look at anybody. Like, I would be roasted to high hells for years to come. Like, they would make... See, yeah. We all have like the weird entries on Rule Thirty Four. We've all been there. We all have that. That's that's what it. That's the cost of being a public image, right? A public pers- personality. Mm-hmm. Um, but there's a big difference between something like that and like spending fifty k and commissioning it. And, yeah. Like it's just such a wild story. I love this one and, honestly. Like that and Sneak Out, yeah. they say. And, right. and you know what? At the end of the day, before we finish off today's video, it's that kind of stuff. Those kind of stories that I love laughing and talking about because there's no stakes to them. I don't even think yes. Verbal Ace is a Verbal Ace doesn't appear to be a bad dude. He's just got. He just yeah, seems like a regular. He's guy. got like a funky fetish. Hot he has too much money on his hands. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's like, Not the anymore. only thing he can be, in my opinion, guilty of is some fucking terrible spending decisions. If you got, well, here's the thing is, if you have, if he had six million subscribers, I didn't dig deep into his uh, account history. You have six million, you were making, you know, half a million dollars a year at your height, at least. And if you were, you know, driving a Camry and you bought your house outright and you got a couple million dollars in the bank and that's your thing and you could, you could drop fifty thousand dollars on a custom animation that you you work on for a couple months yeah. with a team it's Isn't really that, strange but it's not like yeah. you know 
uh, it's not going to bankrupt him. I think okay. it, the more I it, the more uh, I listen about this, the more it kind of just sounds like people are inventing extra details yeah. to the story to make it oh, crazier obviously. than it is. And, and like the thing is, like, look at the end of the day, isn't this what the American dream is about? Make a lot of money and chase yes. your dreams and shit. Freedom of yeah, speech. Yeah, like if you listen, if you want to spend your money on fucking the cringiest shit imaginable, I might not understand it, but as long as you're not hurting anybody, dude, commission all the softcore has been hotel you can look i mean hey listen there's dudes that'll beat their nut off to lois from family guy but at least verbal ace has the money to achieve his dreams a lot of people on the yes. internet they can't even get close to it and that is the story we should be looking at how one animator this is a yeah. success story yeah, I mean, god like, damn it. yeah, it's a success story dude like if it if this guy doesn't have a wikipedia page anyways if i was you verbal ace i would be i would be excited that this would be a footnote in my history because it's definitive proof that I succeeded at YouTube, made it work, and then I also got to achieve my own admittedly hilarious dreams for the wrong reasons because of it. Good job on you, man. Congratulations. And I think that's what we can end it on, guys. Chasing the fucking American dream. Verbal Ace made it happen. Yes. And uh, rest in peace to Coach Red Pill, a man that died as a true Sigma male. <laughs> Actually, he was, he was on the fucking grounds, dude. But, yeah. Uh, is he confirmed dead, by the way, Art? Like, He's confirmed dead, and now it's interesting because a lot of, like, the anti-Ukraine funding crowd are using his story as, like, we can't trust the Ukrainians, we shouldn't give them any more money, they're murdering, you know, American citizens. Um, and, like, they're ignoring <laughs> any of the context of who this guy is. Like, that's not important to them. Like, they're not even using the name Coach Red Pill, they're just saying, like, his real Gonzalo, legal name. Yeah. And just acting like he was this innocent guy that was just criticizing... He was just some American guy trying... <laughs> Trying to help. He was and criti oh God, he criticized the, the government. They threw him away. They don't don't tell any of the details about like the content he made. And he went there for no reason and was trashing the government. And he knew that this was going to happen. But there's something wrong in his head that he kept on doing it. I mean, I guess it is victim blaming, but uh, man, it's this, hard not to. Yeah. This is why I love YouTubers versus traditional media because a YouTube documentarian will, like, explain the situation in the first minute, and then they'll start off with, like, anyways, let's talk about why Gonzalo Lira was controversial in the first place. His one video, I will never date anybody over the age of 19. Like, well, it's kind of funny yeah. when, you, when you watch the local news reports when, like, Chris Chan or Boogie go to jail or get arrested for their for their crimes. It's just yeah. like, you know, uh, you know, Stephen Williams was arrested for firing a gun outside his home. It's like, like they may briefly mention he's a YouTuber, but, like, if... No, no, no. Then you see the YouTube video that fed he got the here's, here's like, the thing is though if, if I dude. was a local news reporter at in Arkansas you got nothing else to do like there's nothing going on there why wouldn't you spend time like giving all of the updates you those articles and those video clips are getting multiple times the amount of views of anything else you're talking about you know them putting a new roof on a church in town why not like dig deep into covering Chris Chan or covering yeah. Boogie 2988 they're not gonna get paid for it right? from who like Who's paying them? Who's yeah? That's a good the question. The news network isn't paying Listen, them. Listen, I would they, I they would be no, so excited uh, if every news station had like a Dateline segment at the end of every day, and like if they came across the boogie story, like somebody would come out all serious and shit and be like, "This is a story of when internet trolling goes awry, when internet trolls clash with their subjects, when when Frank Hassel <laughs> breaks the Hassel doctrine." Like that would be. And while I would, dude, that shit would go viral. You, you tell me an Asmongold clip wouldn't exist of reacting to that Ludwig, Charlie, me, dude. That shit would go viral instantly. That new station yeah, be would be incredible. crazy. Um, but Stephen Williams, well known for adopting the flaming star method of rehabilitation. Yeah. <laughs> no, the, the, then you could have an interview with like the f***ing, like shaman and shit, like a licensed shaman. Like that's the kind of story I would kill to go after. If I was in a local Arkansas news station, that that's all I'd cover. Like, well, it's like I oh, do what true. I have to for the job, of course. But you know, I would be telling my boss, "Listen, there's this like guy. He has like three million subscribers on YouTube. He, there's like this forum that's like dedicated to trolling him. He just fired a gun out in his house, like in the suburbs, for no reason." Because that's a crazy like, story. How, how is that not like the top story? Uh, if I was, I'm with you. I am so with like, you because like I. I don't care. The boomers that don't know about these people 
people, if you inform them and explain local person in town is famous on the internet and he's firing off a gun because some guy with a GoPro on his forehead came to his house, uh, like, and there's a video of it. I don't know. This, this might be getting conspiratorial, but do you think that mainstream media in general tries their hardest to downplay the success and fame or infamy of online oh, personalities? Oh, 100%. 100%. I, I, think, I think especially so. for local news channels, because a lot of them are, a, a lot of local papers and local news stations are consolidated by people like the Sinclair group and stuff. Um, I think they have like a script they got to follow of like, you only cover this, you cover, you know, gangs and like murders and stuff. But when you go off that path of like, hey, let's try out some of these more fringe stories, um, th they just say no because it doesn't go in line with their business model. And maybe like advertisers would be concerned about you covering that but stuff. Do, do you think it's more than just the business model? Like, uh, do, do you think it's, you don't want the news station to be like, all right, local man in town in Arkansas fired a gun outside. He's boogie. He has 4 million subscribers. He has a bigger platform than us. We are the news in this city, and this guy shitting into a microphone is more famous. The, the, well, the, this. Like, do you think it comes from, like, a pride There's always place? been, um, like, going back to the, the Gamergate era, there was always a clear resentment from journalists seeing, like, you know, a Coach Red Pill type going back uh, full circle to him. You know, back in his heyday, he was probably making six figures trashing on, like, you know, dating culture and trashing, like, women and, like, you know, how, like, you should, like, do these approaches to women to get, like, the best results. You know, if you're a random journalist at some company, you're in a bunch of college debt, you're not making that much, and you just see some you know, person that's making a SJW own compilation part 69 on YouTube and making tons of money, you're resentful and you're going to use that power to either not talk about them or trash them and frame them in a terrible way. It just makes yeah. sense. Um, in terms of people like Boogie or Chris Chan, um, like there's no angle like that. So I just don't even understand why they wouldn't want to cover it. Um, in Virginia, when Chris was going through these trial proceedings, um, you know, why didn't the local paper not send someone there to cover that they that article would be the most viewed article of the day um you know the, the kiwi farms people someone would pay for a subscription just to get a, a claim on like get taking a screenshot of it i it, it i i really don't know i think it's just an old mentality i think it's just people don't under people just don't look at like that world you know it's like maybe like for them it's just again it's like it's a story like to understand the boogie story, you have to be a little bit terminally online. Do you guys yes. agree? Like, you have to be online. You have to be following the shit yeah. pretty actively. Yeah, Mike Klum did a really also. good job in one hour kind of laying it all out, though, in a very consumable way yeah. where I showed that documentary to people who do, did not know who Boogie was, and it was a, of a very captivating documentary for them. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's just the style of presentation. Like, his style of presentation was something that most normies can, like, really get behind. Versus, like, your traditional YouTube style of documentary, you know, like a video from me or a video from you, Art, or a yeah. video from anybody that, you know, people don't easily digest. Like, I know only a few people in my personal life, like, that watch internet related content and they can, you know, obviously sit down, but it's not a norm for everyone. Like, the, the other thing is, Honestly, like, I true. can't even describe I don't know a lot of people in yeah. my personal life. Like, my personal friends and family, like, None of them well, care, pretty much. Don't, doesn't your family not know about the YouTube channel? They just think you're doing, like... No, no, of course okay, they Okay, I do. thought you told me the one time that, like, some of your extended family thinks you're just, like, doing marketing online or something. I guess it depends how extended. But, like, you know, my aunts and uncles gotcha. know. You yeah. know, my, my first cousins know. Most yeah. of them. The, the, yeah, right. the, and, and the thing about it, too, is, like, you know, if you explain this kind of story to somebody, it's like, it doesn't really come out naturally, right? Like, I'm like, hey, boys, have you ever seen Frankie Hassel? And violate the hassle doctor. Oh, I've on shown Boogie. tons of normies <laughs> Frank Hassel yeah. clips. That's like my go to. Dude, for so for me, my go to uh Charlie pulling out the uh his rifle on Sneeko. So, These are mags, not clips, mags. Right, that <laughs> clip, I was so like excited. I thought it was the biggest own in the internet's history. I showed that clip to a bunch of people. Uh, I've showed the verbal ace <laughs> I literally showed the verbal ace thing to people. I was like, fellow YouTuber of mine just commissioned this for 50 grand. What do you think of him? Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's it, guys. We had a pretty f***ing long episode covering some pretty interesting shit this week. And I think some of the stuff that we've covered is probably going to grow uh, into next week, too. With shit like um, our buddy Coach Redpill, who is now a martyr. 
Rest for, in peace. Uh, for Fox News. <laughs> but uh, yeah, ladies and gentlemen, we are uh, we've had a pretty awesome like coverage this week. Pretty good episode, and honestly, uh, I would say good start to the year. Uh, anything else you guys want to add on before we tie things off? Yeah, we're doing all right. We're doing all right. Honestly, another year, another year of the podcast. I've been loving you oh, guys. Uh, oh, it's a pleasure. Every time. Some ordinary podcast uh, sour boys flavor uh, sold out. So uh, no more Dude. of that. I literally like he like. By the way, you guys are crazy for selling these things out so easily <laughs> because like every like literally I launched like the flavor with Caleb and it was just like a couple days and it's like it's already sold out. I'm like, no, um, I, I don't know how much Caleb wants to like publicly to people to know the metrics, but he made a couple thousand bags and even before like it was announced on the podcast, just like the email list for Sour Boys was buying up like a big portion of the inventory. Um, you know, it yeah, sells the, out really fast. He, he yeah. can't keep up with the, the, the demand. So next time you see a Sour Boys flavor, if you want it, you have to buy it right away. That's not just yeah. a sales pitch. That's just how it is. I mean, we, we can't even get access it to it unless we're on a PR list, boys. That's how... I didn't okay. get any I of the not get any of, I did not get any of the Summer Ordinary Podcast flavor. Yeah, and we... No, you no, know, I didn't podcast even know it was... Stop. We are the fucking people. It sold out before. We, we didn't even know about it. We are the people <laughs> that you come to watch, and we didn't even get to eat the fucking flavor that it's based off. That's how crazy it, it sold out. It sold out before I knew it launched. I didn't know it launched. And that's it the thing sold is, out. I was like, you, oh, Oopa, that's you awesome. Released it. And Caleb's like, oh, well, it's gone. So. I found out about it launching by going on the website and seeing it was there. And I was like, Caleb, like, the, the Sour right. Boys flavors. I was like, yeah, you didn't know. I was like, no. Uh so uh, I was like, this stuff gets printed like it sells. Yeah. No tomorrow. It's out of the market. So maybe we will relaunch another new flavor uh, in the future. But at that point, we need to make sure we are all on board so we can actually get our flavor and try it. So hopefully you enjoyed the Some Ordinary Podcast flavor. Hopefully you enjoyed today's episode. If you like today's episode, please like, comment, and subscribe. Just like if you dislike it. We are 